Hello and welcome back to another Pro Python tutorial. And in today's tutorial, we're going to dive into Python functions. This is just an introduction to Python functions. Uh, there's a lot that goes into them, a lot we can do with them. Um, so this is probably going to be a couple tutorial series here on functions. I want to make sure that you guys understand them, you're comfortable with them, and you don't shy away from them because functions are a great part of the Python programming language and they give us an, a a lot of uh uh what's the word looking for a lot of tools to uh be able to build some pretty cool programs so let's dive into what a function is basically all a function is is a block of code and what it does is it allow there's a block of code it performs a function when called upon um and then it returns to us an object it's kind of like a um variable if you think about it all right so we can have a variable let's just do an example here let's do whoa, gotta be on my uh interpreter here let's do a uh, total is equal to um four plus two oh, that's not how you do plus four plus two all right so we got our total oh, i spelled that wrong total <laughs> there we go um so there's our Total and total is a variable that's representing two objects being added together, right? And it returns six. Six. So now total represents six, all right? So like I said, functions are kind of similar to um, to variables, all right? So what I mean by that is we can have uh, define. Uh, let's call it addition. We'll call our function addition. Then we're going to do x and y. These are our parameters all right don't i'll dig into this in a second but this is we're defining a function here all right we're going to come down i'm just going to tab over and i'm going to do total is equal to uh x plus y all right come down here tab over i'm going to return total so after this function runs i want to return the um total or the variable that's representing our total object and return it to the to the asker or the the person who wants this not the person but the what's calling this function all right so we come down and all we have to do is do addition and then we do two comma four and we get six all right so if you look at it basically all we're doing is a calling something similar to a to a um where is it right here to a variable all right so we're basically doing that the only difference really with functions is we can apply parameters or arguments if you will and that gives us more functionality now functions can be more than one statement unlike variables who tend to be one statement all right represent one statement functions can be extremely long they can be extremely short all right so there's a million things to functions that make our lives easier um so let's talk about the parts of a function all right the def represents the, the beginning part of the the function statement all right this indicates the python this is a function the next part you got is the name of the function all right kind of similar to a name of a variable all right so here's the name of our function and then the next part is our parameters inside the parentheses now these are per, per, hold on positional uh, arguments or parameters um, so down here 2 went to x 4 went to y all right if I flip-flop these 4 would go to x and 2 would go to y so what it, it goes from left to right Whatever argument you provide first, we'll go to the first one, the second one, the second one, and if you have more, third, fourth, so on. All right, so they're positional. Um, there's ways around that, but we're not going to get into that in today's tutorial. All right, so um, don't forget your colon. And then when you come down into your code block, you either need four spaces or a tab. All right, so you indent it. Um, in here, you can run any type of statement. You can have another um, uh, function in here if you wanted to. You can run if statements, while loops, for loops, so on. All right. 
Um, then you got your return. Now, returns aren't required, but it's quite often used. You can have more than one return. You have 10 returns. You have one return. It doesn't matter. You could have none returns. <clears throat> if you ever get returned a none, that means something screwy in here. It's not returning anything. All right. And we'll take a look at that in a couple seconds. So, <clears throat> um, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, we could always we. This is the basic layout of a function. This is the preferred method of a function. This is cleaner and looks better. Now I'm going to show you a way that is ugly, and uh, I don't prefer you guys use this method. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to define subtraction. All right, and then we're, in there we're going to give it uh, two parameters x and y. And then we're going to close it out with a colon. And then right behind there, I'm going to do total is equal to x minus y. Um, I think it's return. See, I don't write this way, so uh, I'm trying to figure out how we return total. Nope, it's not that way. Maybe it's a... Yeah, yeah, there we go. So it's a semicolon, and I do subtraction, and then I do uh, four and two, and I get two. All right. So after our statement, we need a semicolon, then return total. All right. <clears throat> now this is not the preferred way of writing it, but it's possible, so I showed it to you. Uh, this is ugly, um, and things can get lost in translation in here. We want to kind of keep our functions, you know, neat and clean. That way, if we ever have to go back for maintenance on them, you know, update them, or if we have another programmer working with us, it's easy for everybody to read and understand what's going on. All right, um, I'll clear my screen here. Let's look at um, how the arguments work. All right, so I'm going to create a function here. It's going to define name all right it's going to take two parameters first and last close out my uh, parameters with the parentheses and then uh, colon all right i'm gonna tab in full name oh full underscore name is equal to uh, a string that's going to be formatted so we use the curly braces all right and we'll do format and then in here we'll do first comma last all right and then we're going to come down here tab in again and return full name just like that all right so <clears throat> like i was talking about before that these um parameters up here are positional uh which means depending on the way we enter them into the function as an argument is the way they're going to spit out because they're based on positional so let's go ahead and take a look at that let's call name and I'm going to do uh, first one is John. This is first name. And then last name is going to be Doe. Like this. And we return. And we get John Doe. All right. Cool. That's what we expected. Now, what happens if we do something like this? Name Doe. And then John. Even though up here it says first and last, well, Python doesn't know what first and last means. It has no idea. All it does is knows that hey, this one's going to go to this parameter, and this one's going to go to this parameter, no matter where the heck it is or how it's written or anything. Same with this. This one's going to go to the first, and this is going to go to the last. So take a look at that. Now it's Doe and John. All right? So it's all positional. Um, we don't even need to provide uh, a parameter or an argument. So let's take a look at something like define... Uh, a function we're gonna call it description I don't know what the heck I want to call it but whatever description and when you're naming your functions try to name what they are doing what the code inside the function is doing that way it's easy for you to find or easy for you to call upon all right so um, what I'm gonna do is uh, have a variable that represents a string it's content and it's just gonna say functions are a great tool in your arsenal. All right. 
really simple. Uh, return content. All right. And then if I come down here, I can just say uh, print uh, what are functions like this. And then in here, I'll throw in a placeholder for my format. And then I'll do format. And then I'll do description. And I'm just calling my function without any arguments. All right. Uh, one. Yeah, that's cool. That's right. Yeah, that's not right. Because uh, I capitalize it. Crap. Capitalize print. That doesn't work. But lowercase. It will work. There you go. Sorry about that. Anyhow, um, what we did was we call the function had no arguments. We don't need arguments. All right. Um, we just call it a function. All right. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, oh, um, so functions just they they create an object just like uh, uh, variables can represent an object. Um, functions represent an object. So let's just take a look, quick look at that. We'll go back to our name. We'll define name. And then here I'll take uh, two parameters: be first name, uh, first, and then last. All right, tab in, and we'll do a full name again. And inside the string, we'll give it two placeholders, and then we'll do a format first, comma last. Oops, lowercase last. Tab in, return full name return return now let's take a look at name and we'll do uh john again and then we'll do doe all right so we got john doe and then how about if we do type um type name john oh, it doesn't freaking matter john and no. Put on a string. I got a string. All right. So there's still the same type object. It's a string. Um, that's that's the same as me saying something like this. Full is equal to a string, and we can do two placeholders, and then <clears throat> format, and we could just say uh, John, comma go like that and then we just call full same thing right and then we can just call type on full boom string all right so the same thing all right <clears throat> there's nothing changing here they're all string objects so don't get all screwy like oh, I don't know what this is it's still a string object we learned how to work with string objects and it's all the same right um, all right, last thing I want to cover is uh, the return. Now, I said before we have more than um, one return. We can have multiple returns. We could have no returns, all right? So let's just take a look at an example. So we're going to define a function. We're going to say, uh, I'll just call it num. Um, and this function uh, is going to take a true or false, all right? So if x... All right, if it exists, return something. And what I'm trying to do here is just show you that there's two uh, uh, return statements. True. And down here, we'll tab in else, tab in return. It's false. All right. And then hit return, then we can do number number and we can say represents false okay uh, it's not number it's num crap num false all right so that's what I was going for <clears throat> you see there's two return statements in here we can have two we got three we got 10 we got 40 uh, it doesn't matter we don't need to have one but 
for in this case we had an if statement if if I did num is true it would return it's true all right otherwise down here uh, I put false it returns it's false all right so we got two return statements and that's what it's going to return to us it returns to us a string it doesn't have to return a variable it could be a string it could be an integer it could be anything all right um, how about no return um, statements so how about we do uh, define total we'll just do x comma y and then in here we'll do um, print x plus y alright hit return and then we're just going to do total and we'll do uh, 2 comma 2 close out our total hit return there's 4 alright there's no return in there it just prints back 4 to us we don't need a return um, all right, so what happens if, uh, it doesn't have a print statement in it and, uh, we don't have a return statement, you're going to most likely see this a lot in your programming career. You'll forget to put a return statement and it will return something to you called none. All right. And what you'll see none and be like, what? I, you know, I expected a return to be a number or something like that. You're going to see this a lot, especially when you're learning. You're going to see none. Um, so let's take a look at what none looks like and how it happens. So let's just define a function and we'll call it total again. X comma Y. All right. Tab in and we're going to do Z is equal to X plus oops, plus Y. Hit return. No return statement. We're going to do print total 2 comma 2 and close that print statement out close that total out hit return and we get none why do we get none well because it's not returning anything to us z is representing the answer to this question all right or this equation i should say of four but we're not calling four all right so if i went and redid this hit return and then tabbed in and did z is equal to x plus y. And then I tabbed in to return z. And then came down here and said print total of 2 comma 2. And hit return. It's going to return to me 4. All right. But we're not returning anything up here. But we asked total to return something to us. But it has nothing to return to us. So it's just, it just says none. All right. So that's the introduction to Python functions. Um, they're very useful. Don't shy away from them. Uh, once you get a hang of them and you feel comfortable working with them, it will be a breeze to write any program you want. All right. So in the next tutorial, we'll dive a little bit deeper. I'll show you some other uh, things that we can do with functions. So until then, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.